Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 8 for the FPL. The idea of this series is that you can just blindly pick from the players that I'm showing you, biasing towards the one I'm suggesting may be better, and you should finish in the top 5% globally, which means you'll do all right in your mini leagues. You're not going to win the whole thing, but you'll hopefully do all right. And the reason this works or should work is we're limiting ourselves to the popular players because it's the popular players that you don't have that are going to hurt you. So hopefully that makes sense. So we start by looking at what happened in game week 7 for these players. Then we're going to look up suggestions for game week 8. So points for game week 7. Pickford 15, Sanchez 4, Raya Fleck and nothing. Becker 10, now injured. Martinez 9, Henson, Ariola Ward nothing. For the defenders, Trent got 8, Lewis 4. Gabriel Saliba, Poro, Guardiola, nothing. Next page, defenders, Burn 8, Virgil van Dijk 8, Fowl 6, the rest nothing. Last page, defenders, nothing to speak of there. For the midfielders, Saka 16, Embremo 8, Palmer 6, Bowen 12, Jota 8, rest nothing. Garnacho 3, so again, nothing on this page. For the forwards, Havertz 8, Wood 8, Welbeck 8, Slanky 5. And finally, Munez 6 and the other forwards, nothing. So we're now going to look at game week 8 and what I think of the various players. And they are ranked according to the most important. It doesn't mean the first one you see is going to be the highest scoring, although I think they're the highest scoring, but I do think they're the most important. So hopefully that makes sense as we go along. So for the keepers, Raya is a good keeper. Now, Arsenal have only kept three clean sheets, I think it is, in seven games. So Liverpool are doing better and even Man United are doing better. But Raya is very highly owned. Arsenal do have a very good defence. And even though the upcoming fixtures from next week are Liverpool, Newcastle, Chelsea, not great, he's still absolutely worth having. So if you have Alisson who's injured and you can afford to move to Raya, that's probably worth doing. But anyway, Raya is a good player. And then the rest are just kind of okay, which is Sanchez, Pickford, Flecken. And then the less important keepers, Henderson, Martinez, Ariola, and Becker. And the latest reports I've seen is he's probably out till November. And I suspect you can't afford to keep Becker if he's currently in your squad. You should probably just move him to Raya. If you have Becker and you happen to have another playing keeper then you could sit with him thinking you'll bring him back in four or five weeks, but he's probably going to go down in value before then. So I would be tempted, even if it cost me a minus four hit, to move Becker on. And then Ward. Ward represents any four million keeper who's not playing. For the defenders, Trent is the most important defender and he's a good player. Gabriel's a good player. Pedro Poro's a good player and he's important because he's very highly owned and now Spurs are coming up to quite a nice run of fixtures. And then Lewis from Man City, he seems to be getting the minutes. Man City are coming up to a nice run of games. So although I think they've had one clean sheet so far, it's feasible the next three games they get three clean sheets. And if I was going to play four defenders, the four defenders on the screen now are the four that I'd want to have. Apart from that, Gvardiol is also a good player. Saliba's all right, but nowhere near as important as Gabriel. And Gabriel seems to have a lot more chance of getting a goal. And then Canate's a new entry because he's gaining in popularity and Liverpool, I think, have only had two games where they want clean sheets. They've had five clean sheets. He seems to be first choice uh, central defender along with Virgil van Dijk. So he's all right. He's probably not going to get many attacking returns. He might get some. For the less important defenders, we have so van de Ven's a new entry because Spurs have some nice fixtures coming up. And he's gaining in popularity. They might keep one or two clean sheets. Now he's not actually very attacking. But that said he's very fast. And so far this season he has made two very fast runs. Up the middle of the pitch with the ball. And got a couple of assists. So he may get you an assist. But if you buy Van de Ven. You want to buy him thinking he's nice and cheap. And if you play him that's fine. If he's on your bench that's fine. And then... Well, face, he's just bench fodder. Robinson, so Fulham are coming up with some quite nice fixtures. He's got chance of attacking return. Fulham aren't great for clean sheets at the moment. I think from memory they might have had one. But he's all right for 4.7. 
Konza 4.5, I personally don't particularly like him, but he's here because he has been quite popular. Burn actually got eight points last game week. I don't know if Newcastle are going to turn it around or not. The upcoming fixtures aren't great. Brighton, Chelsea, Arsenal. So if you haven't got Burn, I would suggest you don't get him. But if you have got him, he's all right to keep. So Virgil van Dijk, he is a very good player. Assuming he stays fit, he will get clean sheets. He will get some attacking returns during the season. But hardly anyone owns him. So he's down here on the second page of defenders because he's really not that important. And if he gets 15 points one week and you've not got him, that's not going to hurt you much. Whereas if Pedro Porro from the previous page gets 15 points and you don't own him, that's going to hurt your rank a lot. However, if you've got Virgil van Dijk, it's fine to keep him. He's a very good player. and he's But he is 6 million. You may want to change him to someone else. And then Mazru is still quite popular. As I said earlier, United have got more clean sheets than Arsenal so far this season. I think he may be flagged, but he's expected to probably play. The third page of defenders, we have Anderson from Fulham. Bench fodder, Greaves, Ipswich, bench fodder, Howard Bellis, bench fodder. These will all get clean sheets sometimes. They could all get attacking returns sometimes, though Anderson's probably not that very likely. But the point is you can have a couple of bench fodder defenders and that saves you money that you can then be spending elsewhere. So Vandenberg, I've added him even though he's not very popular because Francis Mitchell asked me to add him because he's in his team. He wants to know how I view him compared to the system. But Brentford aren't great for clean sheets. Their philosophy is we're going to score more goals than you. So personally, I don't particularly care for him, but he's only 4 million. So if you wanted him, that's fine. So White, his minutes are a bit weird and he's flagged at the moment. If we knew he was playing and starting, he would be a very good player. But I can't mark him as good because we don't know what minutes he's going to play and he may not even play anyway. But when he's fit and available, he's a good player, but he's hardly owned by anyone. So he is not going to hurt you if you've got him. So if you've got him and you want to move him on for a cheaper defender that we've seen before now, that's a completely reasonable thing to do. And then Mikolenko's, I don't know if he's going to play. Everton do have some nice fixtures coming up. I think he may be flagged at the moment. So you don't need to sell him, but totally don't want to be buying him either. For the midfielders, Palmer is the most important midfielder and he's a very good player. Saka is a very good player and he's the second most important midfielder. But Saka's coming up to some difficult games. After this week, he's got Liverpool, Newcastle, Chelsea and he's currently flagged. Now, the expectations are he's probably going to play, but we don't know for sure. So unless you're wildcarding, I'd suggest don't get a Saka this week if you've not got him. And even if you are wildcarding, Personally, I probably wouldn't get him this week, but I'd certainly want him probably for game week 12. Embremo, he's only 7.5 million and he's getting returns most weeks and he's very popular. You absolutely want to try and get him in your team if you can. Because he's so highly owned, if you don't have him, he's just going to keep hurting your rank. Sal is a very good player. He may well score more points than any of the other players on the page at the moment. But he's 12.7 million and he's not as popular. I don't think I've had him in my squad this season yet. i got no plans to get him in at the moment. But he is a good player and if you've got him, he's fine to have. Rogers only 5.3 popular. He could get something. He's nearly getting lots of points. But he's actually only, I think, got two returns so far this season. Or two game weeks with a return. Smithrow is good. Fulham have some nice fixtures. He's only 5.7. Luis Diaz is a good player, but he's just coming back from international duty. He may get hardly any minutes this coming game week. Then he's away to Arsenal. Not worth buying. Lots of managers are selling him. So if you want to move him on, that's fine. As a player, he is good. During the season, he should be getting some good points at different times. So you absolutely don't need to sell him. But if you want to, it's OK. Semenyo's coming up with three bad fixtures the next three game weeks, so I wouldn't be buying him now, but if you've got him, he's only 5.7, he's all right to keep. Diego Jota is a good player, but he's playing Chelsea this week and away to Arsenal next game week. So I wouldn't be buying him probably just now, but if I had him, I'd be fine to have him and keep him. So Eze, I wouldn't be buying Eze, but he's very close to getting points, it seems, every game week. 
So presumably at some point he's going to, but he's coming up now to a, quite a nice run of fixtures. He's still quite highly owned, so it's fine to have Eze. It's all right to get Eze. Personally, I probably wouldn't get him, but he's he's all right. Bowen's good player. We had him as green last game. We ended up getting 12 points, but he is lowly owned. He's got Spurs, then Man United, then Forest. Forest have been good defensively. So I wouldn't be buying him now, but if you've got him... That's absolutely fine. I'd be comfortable having him, but I wouldn't buy him. And then Gordon at home to Brighton this coming game week. Brighton can concede goals. Last year, Gordon was good at home. Gordon's all right. He's fine to have. I wouldn't be bringing him in, but if I had him, I'd be comfortable having him. And the last page in midfield is Garnacho. Eric Ten Hugs. His tactic seems to be let's not concede goals at the cost of not being very attacking. So they do have four clean sheets this season. But they're not very good at attacking. So I've, he's sellable. If he does well and you've not got him, it's really not going to hurt your rank. 6.3 million. There are better choices like Rogers and Smith Rowe we saw earlier. They're probably both better choices just now than Garnacho. Dibbling's nice and cheap. Bench fodder. Winks bench fodder. Sun. So I'm saying don't buy him. We don't know whether or not he's going to play this game week. If we knew he was playing, he'd probably be a green player saying he's a very good player. But absolutely don't buy him. If you've got him, you don't have to sell him. And if you did sell him and then he played this game week, you might be quite upset because he is a good player. So only 9.8 million. He is a good player, but we don't know he's going to play. And then Fernandez. So FPL Tony left a comment on the last video saying, why am I saying Fernandez is a good player? Fernandez is a good player. United have been awful. They're coming up to a good run of fixtures. And I think there's a reasonably good chance in the next four game weeks he's going to get two or three returns. But hardly anyone owns Fernandez, And he's the last midfielder of all the midfielders we're listing. That means he's the least important midfielder to have. He's 8.2 million. So you could sell him for one of the cheaper midfielders we've previously seen. And that is a safe move to do. However, he is a good player. But if by the end he's played Leicester, he's not got at least two game returns, then I'll say, yeah, OK, Ericsson Hargs messed everything up. <laughs> we'll probably remove him from the system. But I'm not giving up hope in him yet. I've not got him. If I had him, I'd probably sell him because the players I want, I wouldn't have very popular players. But he's all right. So Haaland, the most expensive player in the game, but he is the most important player in the game. If you don't have Haaland, you're probably in for a world of pain as far as your rank is concerned. But if you don't have him, then hopefully you've got 11 playing players that are all very good. So you don't have to have him, but it's quite risky not having him. The next four games are very nice. So they're playing Wolves this week. They've conceded the most goals in the Premier League. Then they're at home to Southampton. So that could be a whole load of points. Then they're playing Bournemouth and Brighton. So a reasonable chance in the next four game weeks of quite a few goals. Watkins is a very good player, as is Havertz. Not as good as Haaland, and they're both quite expensive. So I've not made Watkins mark Green as a good player because he's only got returned maybe in three games so far. He's not quite firing on all cylinders, but he is a good player. Havertz, after this week, has got Liverpool, Newcastle, Chelsea. Not so good. So I've not marked him as Green, but Havertz is a good player. I'm reckoning Wood to be a good player because he's scoring maybe every other game at the moment. And he's only 6.2 million and he's popular. So if you can get him into your team, that's a perfectly good player. If I wouldn't move Watkins or Havertz to Wood personally, unless I needed to free up the money. But if I was building a squad now, I'd probably choose Wood before Watkins or Havertz because it frees up money. Hopefully that made sense. And then Solanke's a very good player. Spurs have got some very nice fixtures coming up. So he's got a reasonable chance of getting some good points. There's a Spurs midfielder called Brennan Johnson who's not in the system. And although lots of managers are buying him, he's not popular enough yet to add him. If he does well this game week with maybe assist or goals, then his popularity is going to keep rising and he'll be added and he could get some good points. But if he doesn't get anything this week and he might not get anything next week, then suddenly he's, he's not worth having in the system. So if you've got him or you want to buy him, he is a very good buy. I'm just not putting him in the system just now. Welbeck, he keeps seem to be scoring every other game or so. He's all right. He's only 5.8. 
Jackson is a good player. He's 7.9 million though, but he is also scoring some nice points like a goal every other game or probably a bit better than that. And then the slightly less important forwards, we have Calvert-Lewin. He's only 6 million. He seems to miss a lot. Vardy, I personally really like. Leicester being my second team. He's only 5.7 million. Gio Pedro's injured and I can't find confirmation because no one's saying when he's going to be back. There's absolutely no point buying him. He's probably not going to play for the next few game weeks at least, but he is only 5.5 million. So you're not really going to be able to free up much money by selling him and getting someone cheaper. So I wouldn't waste a transfer doing Pedro Tavardi or Calvert-Lewin. But if you are freeing up a space, you could do... Let's have a look if I go to the previous page. If you hadn't, I've worked out, not worked out the maths, but if you had Watkins and Jao Pedro, you might better swap them for maybe Slanky and Wood, for example, and that would be a sensible move. Or even maybe Jao Pedro to Welbeck would probably be all right. Clearly, Welbeck's going to outscore Pedro the next few game weeks, but you are using a transfer to get there. So, Munez, his minutes, he's a real minutes risk. He's hardly getting any minutes. Fulham have got some nice fixtures coming up. But I think he's probably worth selling. You don't have to sell him. He's only 5.8 million. And he does seem to play a few minutes every game. So I think he got an assist last game. Might have been a goal. I can't remember. He's an all right player. Absolutely not worth buying though. And he's okay to move on if you want to. So he's at probably not playing this weekend. But we don't know for sure. So completely don't buy him. But if you've held on to him this long. You might want to keep holding him. But the next two games after this week are Chelsea and Arsenal. So that said, it's probably worth selling Isaac, but you don't have to. And then Cannon represents any four and a half million forward who's never going to play. He's just going to sit on your bench and save you money. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> right, I'm now going to go through the players with a suggested bench order. So for the goalkeepers, the first keeper you see that you've got, I suggest, is the one that goes on your bench. So Ward or any four million non-playing goalkeeper they're obviously on your bench then it'd be Becker who's almost certainly injured but we don't know for sure that he's injured this week but he probably is so he's probably next on your bench and then all the other keepers in the system are away this week there's a reasonable chance there'd be no clean sheet for any of these keepers this week so next it'd be Ariola, Henderson, Flecken, Sanchez, Martinez, Pickford, Rea. Now for your 10 outfield players I'm going to show you all the players in the next three pages the first player you see that you've got I suggest is position three on your bench the next position two and the last position one an awful lot of work goes into deciding this order but you do whatever you like this is just a suggestion from me but I think it's quite a good suggestion really so any four and a half million striker that's not going to play their position three on your bench and then it would be Gio Pedro's injured Isaac probably injured Vanderberg. Winks, Howard Bellis, Mikalenko, Face, Konza, Anderson, Robinson, Byrne, Masre, Greaves, Van der Ven, Munez, Garnacho, Semenyo, Dibbling, Canate, Rogers, Smith Rowe. And then keep going on through your bench. It would be Calvert Lewin, Vardy, White, Bowen. Now I've got White all the way down here. Because we don't know what his minutes are and it's just too risky. He might play fewer than 60 minutes. So even if Arsenal keep a clean sheet, he may not get any clean sheet points for that. Then Eze, Welbeck, Fernandez, Virgil van Dijk, Gvardiol, Pedro Porro, Lewis, Sun, who probably won't play but we don't know, Gordon, Jackson, Luis Diaz, Diego Jota, Wood, Saliba, Gabriel... If you have Gabriel and Saliba, then it's OK to drop Saliba a bit further down the ranking. I'd probably put him between Vardy and Calvert-Lewin if I also had Gabriel. But if you want to play them both, that's fine. And then Trent, Havertz and Watkins. There's six players I haven't shown you and they're the captaincy choices. And the suggestion for captaincy this game week would be Haaland, I think, is a very good choice. He's probably going to be the most popular choice. And that's almost certainly who I'll be choosing. But other possibilities are Salah could be all right and Palmer. So Liverpool and Chelsea are playing each other this game week. But Salah and Palmer are both completely capable of scoring against anyone. So they're fine choices. As is Saka, but there's a slight injury doubt about him. 
Solanke's all right, and Embremo seems to be getting returns more often than not. So that is probably the order that I would choose myself. But any of these are fine for captain. Any of these are fine for vice captain. If you don't want to choose two of these or you can't, then any of the other green midfielders or forwards would also be fine choices. As for the background picture, well, since my last video, you may have seen in the news a story about Loch Ness, where some captain with a sonar took some sonar records, which he's released, and it shows an interesting shape moving underwater, which is roughly the shape of what they think the Loch Ness Monster would be. So I found that interesting. I haven't been to Loch Ness. Personally, I don't think there's a Loch Ness Monster, but I think it's a very nice story. I think the most credible evidence we've ever had for the Loch Ness Monster is this photo from about 150 years ago, um, where we clearly have what looks like potentially a Loch Ness Monster wearing an old mule hat and he's got a little football there. So there we have it. That's what happened in game week seven and my suggestions for game week eight. Hopefully it made sense. And remember, if you follow this, you've got no chance of winning the whole thing, but you'll hopefully do all right in your mini league. You may even win your mini league. If there's like 20 people or fewer in your mini league and there's no one in it that's spending absolutely ages researching, you're probably going to finish top three. You may even win it. Who knows? <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>